All right, let's talk some Detroit Lions football on the eve, I think, of cut day, or it's coming up pretty soon. But uh, let's talk about the tight end position. A lot of people said that Jesse James came and had a bad year. They spent a lot of money on him, spent a high draft pick on TJ Hawkinson. And, you know, Jesse James said he had a heart to heart talk with Daryl Bevel. But to be honest, Daryl Bevel is what's wrong with the tight end position. It wasn't Jesse James. It wasn't TJ Hawkinson. Also, him being a rookie as well. But let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And it's for years, it's been talks about if Matthew Stafford has issues with throwing the tight ends. Now, you see a lot of young uh, quarterbacks have success. The tight end is they binky. It's they pacifier. It's what they lean on. And uh, other than the run game, if you have a good run game, and, you know, I have a hard time having, finding that Matthew Stafford is the problem with the tight end connection because they're such big targets. And, you know, they usually help, you know, quarterbacks. I look at Lamar Jackson. His number one target last year without even having to look at the stats was Mark Andrews. Um, you know, so you just think like what offense in Seattle did Daryl Bevel really expose and abuse the tight end? I mean, he had Jimmy Graham for a few years. It didn't work. Um, Luke Wilson, he had, he, he more was a downfield threat. So, you know, he hasn't really had a lot of success. Even when he had Brett Favre and Tavares Jackson and Gus Rott in Minnesota, I don't really remember who was a tight end then. And, you know, that's something that he got to fix. And one of the things he hasn't really brought up the code to modern day is utilizing the running backs out the backfield. So when the Lions couldn't run the, get, run the ball last year, neither, Daryl Bevel had a hard time getting with the times where Sean Payton was able to make the adjustment and say, you know what, the short passing game is going to be the extension of a handoff for us and Kamara. You know, uh, Bill Belichick, they did it with uh, James White in uh, New England. And really now the short passing game has become an extension of the running game. And Daryl Bevel hasn't really came up to code. Or, or, or modernize his offense to do so. So right in those situations is where he's lacking that. He's the best offensive coordinator we have in quite some time. I do agree. But, you know, utilizing Kerryon at the backfield, he didn't do a good job of that last year. And Kerryon has tremendous receiving skills. Now you add another two other backs to have tremendous receiving skills in Huntley and with also uh, DeAndre Swift. And if he don't bring it up to code there and he don't bring it up to code with the tight end, then... The Lions going to have some issues if they don't run the ball this year. And with the tight end position, he just didn't really draw up a good playbook this year, straight up and down. You know, Jesse James is really not. He said that was his toughest year of his career last year with the Detroit Lions. And he didn't do enough to get the most out the tight ends. You know, when you sit there and you say, we're going to bring Jesse James in to be our tight end, Belleville has to envision utilize him in that offense. And then when you double down and say, you know what, we're going to draft TJ Hawkinson to be our tight end. So the difference between a great coordinator and a good coordinator like Daryl Bevel, Josh McDaniel say, hey, okay, you give me two tight ends, Aaron Hernandez and Gronkowski, watch me make it work and perfect it. He perfected it. You know, he used Aaron Hernandez athleticism underneath and he used the deep and physical skills of Gronkowski to really, you know, put him in position. He made it work. You gave Daryl Bevel two tight ends. He had no vision to make two tight ends work. Matter of fact, Slow it down, re rewind it. He had no visions to make one tight end work. So that's the issue. Daryl Bevel is the main problem. It's not Matthew Stafford. It's not Bob Quinn, Patricia. It's not the tight ends. He has to find a way this year to change his offense to where the tight end has to be effective. See what other teams doing. The crosses, the drags, the outs, the ends, the option routes. And he has to, he has to, he has to really do that. And it didn't help Hawkinson last year that Bevel couldn't make the adjustment with him or Jesse James to make them, you know, successful. So when you look at it in that situation, Daryl Bevel is the number one issue. Um, what's going on with the tight end position, man. And Jesse James said it was a hard year last year. Hawkinson had a hard year. This year they should come out with a lot of two tight end sets. You know what I'm saying? Because not only is that going to help the running game, but also it makes your offense an enigma. Are they going to go out on routes? Are they going to go on delay routes? Are they going to stay and run and block? So you don't know what can happen. You know what I'm saying? Going out there with two tight ends, you know, the defense is going to have to respect that. You know, and also it's going to help your tackles out. Your tackles struggle blocking, you know what I'm saying? Just by putting two tight ends out there, you don't know if they're going to run, they're going to pass, play action, delay release. So the Lions should see a lot of two, action, uh, two tight end sets. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of tight and heavy sets as well, too. And they'd be able to run the ball with success as well, too. And the short passing game to the running backs is something that Daryl Bevel got to, uh, you know, improve on, man. It's just 
he ain't perfect, but he the reason they struggled last year. You know, to be honest, he he's the he's the million dollar reason the tight end struggle. So with Jesse James sitting there and he probably figuring out what's wrong, this, that, and the third. I did this in Pittsburgh. It's just that Daryl Bevel hasn't had a lot of success throwing to the tight end. So, you know, what could they do? I mean, two tight end sets. You could put them in the slot. I mean, you can utilize they they size. You can bunch them up so they get a clean release. I mean, just do you know do what makes them great. You know, or excuse me, you know, uh, you know, perfect your offense or scheme your offense to what they do well. You know what I'm saying? And what they do well is Hawkinson is an athletic tight end who can block, who can grow across the middle, who can win one on ones, who physically strong. And he's been tearing up in camp, and so is Jesse James. So that's just something that he kind of got to look into. Uh, into changing, man. That's like one of the biggest hurdles for this offense this year is utilizing the tight ends. And I believe if he able to feature the tight ends this year in a lot of two tight end sets and, you know, in the slide and not out the backfield, I think the Lions going to have a lot of success. Not only throwing the ball, but running the ball. That should be their base offense coming out two tight ends, two receivers, one back. You know, that, that should be their base offense because both of those tight ends can block. You know what I'm saying? And Marvin Jones and Kenny Galilee should be physically enough to block on the outside. And it just keep people off balance. You know, everybody want to spread it out, look sexy, look fly. You know what I'm saying? They want to air it out. But sometimes, you know, basic generic, the offense is good enough. If I line up there, two tight ends, two receivers, one back, I mean, you, you don't know what I'm going to do. I could run it to the outside to the right. I could run it to the outside to the left. I could run it inside the tackle, inside the guards. I can play action, send one tight end out to release to catch a route, keep one tight end in. You know, I could do all things. I could do max protection. I could play action and send two routes out there. Like, you know, at the end of the day, it's just it's going to be hard to defend that, that offense because, you know, you got a tight end in Hawkinson who's sneaky athletic who can stretch the field too. So they come in, put eight, nine in the box to line up against those two tight ends. You know, now I can drop back. And then, and I got one on and I got one on one on, on the outside somewhere because if you keep one safety deep, you know what I'm saying. All I got to do is run my tight end down the seam or on a skinny post or a post route that occupies the, the the safety in the middle of the field. And now I got two one on ones on the outside, or I could take my tight end, uh, one of my tight ends, and keep one on the block, keep one on the out route. You know, I got him one on one on the out. Even if they playing zone, it's just you know once they drop that eighth or ninth man in the box. Or the eight men in the box, you got one tight end back there, one safety back there, and you usually got one on ones on the outsides. And they choose to keep two two safeties back. Then we got numbers in the box. We got two tight ends in there. We got two receivers. We got a running back in there. You know, then it's a hat on the hat. And then the, all the running back got to do is make one miss, and that should be a nice chunk. So, however you, I mean, that's just genius for what the the Patriots used to do with tight with tight ends and Aaron Hernandez and Gronkowski. It was hard to defend because they both was willing to block. Tom Brady had great uh, pin pack, pinpoint accuracy. In addition to that, it was tough to fucking defend because if you drop eight in the box, then they're going to go over your head. If you drop eight in the box, then, you know, then they still had tight ends on little option routes and out routes and in routes and dig routes. It, it's, it's impossible to guard if you perfect that. Then that's taking a nickel back off the field. from Now you're really going out there in 43, 3, 4 personnel. You know what I'm saying? If they come out in, in three back, three DBs, three cornerbacks out there, you should run all over that. So that should be their base offense. Two tight ends, two receivers, one running back out the backfield. You know, and when people start biting up there, Stafford going to have windows as big as motherfucking Jerusalem out there. So um, that's something that he got to perfect. You know, if I was him, I'd turn on a, t a ton of Patriot film on how to use Hernandez and how to use TJ Hawkins. Now, Hernandez a little bit shiftier than then Jesse James and Hawkinson, yeah, but you still can utilize that thing. And if the, and the NFL is going one way, you don't really have to follow the the fad, the trend. But the NFL, NBA, everybody you want to shoot three, shoot three, shoot threes. The team that perfect, you know, playing inside out again is the team that's going to be uh, successful. So the, the Lions got to find a new trend of the NFL. You know what I'm saying? And I think the new trend for them, you're paying $22 million for th two or three years for, Hawk, for James. You paying first round money, top ten pick for Hawkinson. They they both should start. Two out there don't mean and Amendola can't get out there and do his thing sometime. But you know Amendola making less than both of them. You know and Amendola is not gonna play a lot of the games neither. He always injured. He gonna miss three or four games. So that also you know kind of 
keep him fresh throughout the season as well too so let me know what you guys think i don't blame the tight ends of stafford or patricia for what's going on i think daryl bevel is the reason why the tight ends really ain't meshing the way they should and i think he'll fix it this year and he, jesse james said they had, had a heart to heart talk so hey let me know what you guys think don't forget me on facebook instagram twitter you reach out if you have a business question quality response your video request keep sharing the videos want to make a donation to the channel cash app cj good 313 paypal link in the description best way to donate is share share the video one time for the one time it's your boy cj goodfellow goodfellow sports tv don't forget to check out our detroit lions talk playlist and check my other channel out goodfellow sports tv right here on youtube we